Green hydrogen is the new buzzword these days. Its proponents say it could play a critical role in the future of decarbonization strategies. What are green hydrogen's advantages over other clean technologies? And where do you envisage global green hydrogen production capacity in the long term, sir? So, first of all, the decarbonization of the energy system uh, will go through a profound electrification of, uh, of the system itself. The fact is that there are sectors as the long shipping transport, as uh, the heavy industry, the big chemical, petrochemical plant that are difficult to electrify. And in this sector, green hydrogen could be the right answer because of the its own characteristics. So it's important, the, the advantage of, uh, of green hydrogen is in the role of being an energy career and the storage uh, tool and uh, will be very useful for the electrification of uh, the sector that I mentioned. Concerning the capacity we need to be installed our estimate is 1,700 gigawatt from now to 2050. So this is the installed capacity we need to go to net, to go to net zero to in 2050. Mr. Lacamera, green hydrogen is still relatively expensive. How does it compare to costs of blue hydrogen with carbon capture and storage? And how could we bring down these costs and make it cost competitive? So you are absolutely correct in the sense that it's true the blue hydrogen could be today, financially speaking, more competitive than green hydrogen. But if we consider also the environmental costs, this uh, competitiveness will vanish. What we have uh, estimate as an uh, arena that uh, the green hydrogen will be competitive in 10 years from now. That is uh, already a very a long time before it was expected. But yesterday we learned in this debate with the, comp the private companies that they uh, push for having uh, green hydrogen be competitive already in five, uh, in five years. The key for uh, having green hydrogen more competitive are essential. The continuous decline of the cost of, uh, of uh, the uh, renewables. On the other side, the declining cost, the decreasing cost of uh, electrolyzer. So for getting this cost down, we have to put the right policies in, uh, in place. A very bad year in 2020, health-wise, socially, and economically. With regards to renewable energy investments, how bad was 2020 according to the latest numbers available to you at IRENA? So, naturally, 2020 has been a dramatic year. And we still are paid the consequences of uh, uh, this uh, tremendous year for all humanity. Concerning the energy system, we already, as Arena, last March, we say that the crisis was going to impact evenly the energy sector, but that renewables were going to impact much less. Mm. And what we said in March has been proven. And what we can say has been that uh, during 2020, renewables has been the most resilient way to produce energy. This means that the share of the renewables into the energy grids has been much higher than in the past and much higher of the uh, fossil fuel, uh, fossil fuel uh, produ uh, energy production. But what's the most, most important to say, and then we see that also the investment have not decreased. We have no the definitive data. We will have uh, in, a, in a few weeks from now. But what we can surely say that the zero that we have seen this year between uh, the installed capacity of renewable and the installed capacity of the traditional plant is going to widen dramatically this, uh, this year. And this could be a good premise 
for the years to come. The world has been diverting an increasingly growing share of investments towards renewable generation, but some worry that not enough investments are flowing into grid flexibility to allow for a bigger share of renewable generation. Could this, Mr. La Camera, this situation in the medium term become a stumbling block in the world's energy transition into a low carbon future? I think, sir, that this is a very key question. And uh, this also uh, may be able to clarify a little bit why going directly to promote green hydrogen renewables could be a better choice than going for retrofit in the past. Mm. That we know should be an option for a certain area where, uh, uh, especially for the country that produce uh, oil and gas, where CCS could be still uh, an option. The fact is that uh, we have to think about the energy system of the future. And the energy system of the future will be characterized by more interlinkage, more interconnection, and flexibility. So if you want to invest into the future uh, energy system that will be based, and there is no doubt, on renewables complemented by hydrogen and bioenergy, if you want to insist to invest in the future, grid are very important. This is the reason in our uh, 2050 uh, for, for, uh, forecast, we say that we need uh, uh, at least uh, 13 trillions of, uh, of US dollar investment into the grids. And also in our agenda, uh, responding to the COVID pandemic, we have uh, given a, a major role in investing in grid. So interconnection, artificial intelligence, flexibility are the future of the energy system, the role of the consumer. So we have to try to abandon as soon as possible the logic and the rationale of the past and moving soon to the future. This year, Mr. La Camera, is an important one on the front of climate change as the U.S. rejoins the Paris Climate Agreement and the world prepares for COP26 in Glasgow later this year in November. You have pushed for green economic recovery to tackle the corona fallout and the climate crisis together. So far, do you see countries fulfilling their climate pledges, at least on the renewable side, which is central to their climate pledges? So this is absolutely a crucial, uh, a crucial here. And uh, we have to say that uh, the pledge the, the country made uh, responding to the Paris Agreement are themselves not sufficient. So we know that what has been committed by a country in their national determining contribution uh, to, the, to the Paris Agreement will bring us for an increase of temperature of about three degrees Celsius. So the question is not only how far they went in implementing their pledge, it's also that they, they need to be more ambitious in their pledges mm. now that is the five years of the implementation of the Paris Agreement and they are called to renew their engagement. So the success of Glasgow will be based on the ambition of the, of, uh, of the members. And uh, what may bring us to be optimistic in this respect, at least two aspects. One is that the 2020 crisis has made clear to everyone that if you want to fight a common challenge so we have to work together, as we are doing in the pandemic time. This applies absolutely also for the climate challenges. And so the reason ARENA is working with countries, we are supporting seven countries in prepare the NDC, National Dynamic Contribution, is to raise ambition everywhere. In this respect, and I will conclude, another encouraging aspect, the second aspect is that we are assisting to the EU that is raising his ambition to 55% reduction in 2030. We have been seeing and carbon neutral in 2050. And this has been joined by Japan, by South Korea, 
South Africa, Africa, and China say carbon neutral 2060. And now we have a new American US administration that say 100% clean energy in 2035. So all these ele elements may us optimistic, optimistic that uh, we may get a good result in Glasgow and we can definitely accelerate the energy transition that Arena is leading and is in place, giving the necessary speed and scale to respect the Paris Agreement goal. So it's very important to connect the response to the COVID to the new ambition under the Paris Agreement. This is our call. You have recently uh, at IRENA signed an MOU with FAO to better deploy renewables in the agri-food sector. Explain to us and our viewers, Mr. La Camera, how can renewables play a role in this sector? The nexus, water, agriculture, energy, is absolutely there. Imagine just water for agriculture. If it's to be pumped from, from uh, the soil, we need energy and uh, we need clean energy. So it's very important that uh, but it's also not only for, for this, also in the, in, the, in, the, in the food chain, in the cool chain, in the cold chain, we need energy. So energy is necessary for, for, for agriculture and, and uh, we need energy that is clean. So the, the, the link is very intuitive that we have. And working with FAO, will uh, give IRENA a chance to uh, have uh, his voice listen in the occasion of the next food summit. We have worked with the UE authority on provide a meeting, a February meeting just in the occasion of the Abu Dhabi Sustainable Week. We believe strongly that uh, the partnership with, uh, with uh, FAO may help IRENA to be closer to the least developed country in Africa as in another part of the world.